Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button, also subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang, notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats. I went live stream earlier, so you may know some of this news. I have more to fill you in. Shout out to the channel donations, PayPal, also the Patreon family. We working. Now, I told you guys in January, and I'm going to keep saying this. This was not going to be a good year for a lot of you casuals. And the good thing is, I meant it. You know what I mean? Tell the truth. Tell the truth. And... I always challenge you guys as real boxing fans, listen to what say what people say then and now, before and after. Look at the whole spectrum. You know what I mean? Don't just pick up a book, read one chapter, close it and say that book's bad. Look at what they're saying and see who's consistent and who's not. Now, a lot of people, they have agendas and affiliations or whatever, so they wanted to side with HBO or Top Rank or Golden Boy, whatever the situation is. And the opposite side they wanted to counter and bash like pbc but truth be told I, I tweeted this earlier showtime boxing has been killing in 2017 this is my opinion has been killing hbo right especially regarding their their premium content meaning if i have a hbo subscription and i have a showtime subscription and i only watch those channels for boxing as a boxing fan, clearly Showtime is delivering a lot more because you have to keep in mind, even if you have HBO or Showtime, you don't get their pay-per-views included with that package, right? That's a fact. And I, I told you a good idea and I'm waiting for someone to bite this idea, someone up top to hear a video like this and bite it. But I think it would be great for and a great service for your boxing fans because literally my cable package I don't watch ballers. I don't watch anything else. A lot of the movies, I just red box it or I already watched it in the theater. You know what I'm saying? Or I buy it. So I really have HBO and Showtime for their boxing. And I know there's a lot of people. You may not think it because it's a small niche, but there are a lot of people like that, right? And we'll get to the top of, the, of this video. But long story short, if you only watch those networks and subscribe to them for their boxing programming, I mean, Showtime's clearly delivering a lot more because like I said, Showtime, they've only had one pay-per-view. That was Mayweather McGregor. It had to be to pay for the event and, and the fighter salaries and, and all that. It wouldn't have done it justice to put on regular Showtime. I mean, why? If you can make the money, why not? Canelo Triple G, okay, that had to be on pay-per-view. But HBO had Ward Kovalev on two on pay-per-view this year. They also had um, Canelo Chavez Jr., which was pretty much a dud, things like that. Now, fast forward to the Showtime side. On their regular network and their affiliates like CBS, you're getting Danny Garcia, Keith Thurman. Adrian Broner fought twice already, and he fought Granados. I was at that fight and had a pretty stacked card with Lamont Peterson. Marcus Brown, Top Dog Williams was on that card. Leo Santa Cruz, you had Broner come back and fight Mikey Garcia. Another stacked card with Jamel Charlo and Eliminator. You had Berto Porter with Jamal Charlo or Jamel Charlo versus Charles Hadley. You know what I mean? So they're stacking the cards pretty well. Now, like you guys see in the title, November 4th, it is official. Deontay Wilder versus Luis Ortiz. Hell of a fight. Hell of a fight. Now, before I get into Wilder Ortiz, you have to keep in mind, there's other great fights. Like I'm really looking forward to rigging out Lomachenko. But from what I've seen, and I, I mean, obviously I don't know what, what top rank is planning with that, but by and large, PBC is delivering as far as the stacking of cards. I was just at Canelo Golovkin. I covered that fight as media and the undercard was not great to me. You know what I mean? Jojo Diaz was supposed to have a tougher fight, but he pulled out. You know what I mean? He got injured or whatever happened, but it just wasn't a great stack card. PBC is, is stacking the cards like the 154 pound junior middleweight fights that's coming up in October. That's, that's basically like a tournament. You really have all the top guys at 154, really, except for Demetrius Boo Boo Andrade in that. You know what I mean? You have undefeated Terrell Goucher versus Edislandi Lada, who arguably shouldn't have any losses. You have 
uh, up and comer like Erickson the Hammer Lubin versus another undefeated guy, Jermel Charlo. Then you have a new IBF champion, Jared Swift Hurd, versus a, a veteran who's been in there with Koto, Canelo, Lada, and that's Austin Trout, Jamal Charlo. Right? So, I mean, it's just crazy what PBC is doing. They're stacking these cards. Now, speaking of stacked cards, in addition to Wilder Ortiz, November 4th at the Barclays Center, they're putting, and this was a deal he got, Bermain Stavern, who was the number one for Wilder's belt, he got paid some step aside money and promised to fight. So if he gets past his opponent, Dominique Brazil, then, and that's going to be on Showtime Extreme, if he gets past him, then he'll be in, in line for Wilder Ortiz winner. So it'll be good to see, and I mean, Bermain Stavern's a good fighter versus Dominique Brazil. His only loss was to Anthony Joshua. So that's a solid fight on this card. Right. But in addition, this this card marks the return of Daniel Jacobs. And then they're also um, the mandatory for it was supposed to be Julius Ndongo's belt. His name is Sergey Lipinitz. And Julius Ndongo obviously got stopped by Crawford and Crawford got his IBF belt, but he vacated it because he's planning on moving to welterweight. So that's also added to the card. Daniel Jacobs, he's fighting a, a to be determined opponent. So I don't know, but it'd be good to see him. We haven't seen him back since the Golovkin loss, which I thought Jacobs won. He's he's definitely a top middleweight, so hopefully they can get, you know what I mean, a, a top known guy, somebody good for that. And then you have Sergey Lipinitz, who's going to fight for the vacant IBF title since Crawford's moving up and he vacated the belt. So, you know what I mean? It's just crazy. And the Sergey Lipinitz from Kazakhstan, he has a 12-0 record undefeated with 10 KOs. So, to me, it's interesting because if he wins, he'll be a champion. Crawford's moving up. He already did his business. So Mikey Garcia might land at 140. I don't know if he wants to go back to lightweight. But you also have Regis Progress, Progus or whatever his name is. Um, so we could see, since Crawford is leaving, we can see who, who's next up at 140. And like I said, Daniel Jacobs always puts on fan-friendly fun fights. And I want to see what he's looking like since his March loss to Golovkin. So hopefully they get they round up a good opponent. And Bermain Stavern, Dominique Brazil. Brazil's in entertaining fights. He's much taller than Stavern. So Stavern's been out for 19 months. That could be a good fight. So I'm just looking forward to it. And then obviously the main event, Wilder versus Ortiz, goes without saying. I really see someone getting knocked out in that. And that's just all on one card that I know of. So I'll keep you updated when Sergey Lipinitz, his, his opponent selected, and Daniel Jacobs. But, I mean, without question... As far as the regular premium programming, Showtime is murdering HBO. Because name the HBO card that was this stacked. Or stacked like Berto Porter or, or the junior middleweight. Um, like I said in a previous video, you know a card stacked when the main event, there's other fights on the card where you're like, nah, that should have been the main event. That's how you know. Because when I'm at Canelo Golovkin, there were no fights on the undercard that I was anticipating more than Canelo Golovkin right you when you look at like let's say the one card mayweather canelo some people might have been more eager to see danny garcia versus lucas matisse than mayweather canelo let's say they like oh mayweather's gonna school canelo but danny garcia lucas matisse you know what i mean so when you can get an undercard or a co-main event fight that's arguably better than the main event and that you're anticipating more that's how you know when you have a good card because that doesn't happen all the time. Like I said, Canelo Golovkin, there was no fight on that undercard that I was looking forward to more than the main event. But in that 54 pound, I'm looking forward to Erickson the Hammer Lubin versus Jermel Charlo more than I am Edis Lada versus Terrell Goucher. Now that's not a diss to either of them or shade. I'm just saying my personal taste, I don't know what to expect from the Jermel Charlo Lubin fight. And that's the one I'm really looking forward to. And this happened again with Ringstar and PBC when Abner Mattis fought Jesus Cuellar. I'm like, that's a good fight. This was in December. But I was looking more forward to Jamal Charlo versus Julian J. Rock Williams. So to me, that's how you know PBC is stacking cards. When when you have co-main events and shit, that could have been the main event. You know what I mean? They easily could have made Jamal Charlo versus Julian J. Rock Williams as his own main event and then put some other fight on the Abner Mattis, Jesus Cuellar and really stretched it. But that's what PBC is doing. So like I said, listen to what people said then and what they're saying now. What happened to PBC is going bankrupt. They can't pay their fighters and they won't be around. Shit, they're doing a pretty solid job. Steven Espinosa, Showtime, Showtime Affiliates. 
and premier boxing champs because I'm looking forward to this. Like I said, I, I personally would probably be shocked if Vasil Lomachenko Guillermo Rigondeaux has a fight where I would rate it like an eight on the undercard. I'm not talking the main event. I'm talking about undercard. If they put in like an uh, undercard where I'm just like, wow, that's like Jeff Horn versus Jesse Vargas or you know, I mean, something that's real, real good, right? I would be surprised if they did something like that. But we shall see. Let me know your thoughts. Wilder Ortiz is a great card. I'm looking forward to it. Drop your thoughts. Make sure you smash the like button as always. Hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.